I'm so grateful for our next guest because yes. he's been all over the world. He's been working forever. He's in his craft. He's a professional beyond all reason. Yes. And he just has one of those things where people know his music. They yeah. know who he is. They know his name. Yeah. And he, I call it iconic. I'm sure he's so humble he won't say it, but he's I, iconic. He's that dude. Hey, you guys, welcome to another episode of Making It. My name is Kenan Cooley, and I am with Alvin Chia. Hey, Kenan, how you doing? Mr. Chia. Mr. Girl, you Chia. got that island glow to yeah. you. I can tell you're not in the U.S. I can tell <laughs> you, you see you've reached song Nirvana. <laughs> I don't know what <laughs> island this is, <laughs> but that's where you are. Hey, Mr. Chia, Mr. Chia. Oh, ah, uh, yeah, Chia. man, yeah, okay, man, I'm yeah. So, you know, the funny thing is, I was, I'm i currently in St. Croix, and guess where we all know you were? I was in D.C. I was trying to follow, find you, and you were gone. You were and doing I was this. <laughs> and I was doing this. Exactly. <laughs> and I was, ooh, it's so hot. Uh, and I'm freezing. <laughs> I yeah. apologize on behalf of my original state that uh, froze you to death. But no, so that's was, okay. It was really nice. It was really nice. I had a ball. I always have a good time at DC and the, in the DMV. Uh, lots of friends there, a lot of great food. So it was cool. We got in there that morning, hit the ground running, two shows with our next guest. So we're going to talk about all of that. Yeah, we're going to talk about all of that. Is, you know, I've been chasing you guys down to be together forever. You I made it happen our, and then you left. I see our guest by ourselves, himself. Yeah, right. And you guys by yourselves, of course. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I wanted to be together. To triangulate, but that's what's going to happen today. That's what's happening today. And I'm so grateful for our next guest because yes. he's been all over the world. He's been working forever. He's in his craft. He's a professional beyond all reason. Yes. And he just has one of those things where people know his music. They yeah. know who he is. They know his name. Yeah. And he, I call it iconic. I'm sure he's so humble he won't say it, but he's I iconic. He's that dude. He is that yeah. dude. They have a thing in basketball where they say, I am him, son. I am him. <laughs> he is him. He is him. <laughs> he is him. Welcome, I'm Mr. Kirk Whalem. All right, he's here. Oh, hello, sir. From the cheap seats. <laughs> what was it for me to be, you know, while I was off here, just sitting here with my uh, Asper cream as the, as, the, <laughs> as the older people amongst us are dealing with uh, Arthur as, as the old folks. Now, I, I, there's so many different ways that we could start about this. And that was one of the things I was going to talk about. We did something about a couple of years ago. We were on the road and this I, I call it the Kirk Whalen challenge. This cat okay. did on. Uh, I don't know if it was his birthday or nearby. He got on there doing pull-ups, and he did like what was it, sixty, Kirk? I, I didn't do sixty. No, I think it was probably forty. I don't fifty. I don't know something like that. We were well, all like, like thirty-five <laughs> more than I can ever do. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. First of all, you got to be, be of the weight where you can hold on to the bus and not pull the whole thing down. I oh, couldn't even do that. This was on the bus. This was Wait, on the bus. We're bus? flying down the road, and Kirk is like, <laughs> yeah. So, you know, they had the bar that, that that you hold on to that goes all the way up and down the bus. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That, well, yeah. so yeah. The tour bus. So let's just clarify. You're talking about yeah, the tour bus. Yeah. On the tour bus. On the okay. tour bus. Sorry about that. Yeah. They help to make the miles go by. Yeah. You wow. know. So but you I, deserve your aspirin cream, brother. You know. So that's why you're in uh, great shape right now. You look great. Well, thank you. I am grateful. You know, I will say, you know, God will take any any motivation. I have a seat, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, the Lord will take any motivation. Like yeah, yeah. when when <laughs> I met my princess. You know, I was not looking for Jesus. I was looking for girls, and I had the worst intentions in mind. I was 15. And uh, the Lord took that messed up motivation, and, and he presented to me my, my lifetime gift of Ruby. Yeah. But the motivation of vanity will yeah. get yeah. you down on the floor, yeah. doing them sit-ups and then pull-ups, whatever, everything with up in it. <laughs> but, but Kirk, I got to say, man, um, this is one of, this is so many things I could just gush about Kirk about, but this is one of the most disciplined cats that I've ever met. And it makes perfect sense that part of his discipline is his physical fitness. Because right. re rehearsal, 
when nobody's looking, Kirk is rehearsing for no reason. <laughs> after Grammys, after sold out shows, after world tours, he's back in the basement doing rudiments. I'm like, wow, I'm going to get some sleep. This brother's in here still rehearsing. I'm back there doing what, what the, the British call it, you know, British musicians like, well, I don't understand. Well, it seems the saxophone, play, the saxophonists, they're constantly <laughs> doing, they're doing this thing, it's sort of beatly, beatly, beatly. What is it the sound you make? But it's not necessary, is it? it it's sort of, it's the purple. <laughs> they do it anyway. Beatly, beatly, beatly. No, I, 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 no I, I'm telling you, every aspect that I've seen, I've been so, so, so impressed. And because we are musicians and we right. are professionals and we know what it takes to keep it going, game recognizes game. So I, 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 there are a lot of cats that are out here pretending to do it. Kirk is the real one. I just, I just got through calling you him. You know how they do that in basketball? I am him, son. I am him. Right. Kirk is him. That's awesome. You are him. I will so take... Kirk, let me ask this question. So yes. just to, to curtail off of what Alvin is anyway, is that you know, you're always feeling like you have to be on your game, mm -hmm. even at this stage of the game. How long have you been in the game and why do you still feel like you need to keep it moving and never feel like you have achieved? Yes. Your... Well, I'll start by saying that I kind of uh, am a slow learner. Like, I think you have to reckon with uh, how you learn. At this point. And so, you know, I think where it maybe, yes, there's a diligence part of it, right? Mm -hmm. And that is a part of my DNA and also what I learned from my mom and what I learned from my dad. But there's a part of it that it takes me longer. So, you know, mm -hmm. I think once you get that in your head, like, hey, be okay with who you are. You, mm -hmm. My dad used to say, it's hard enough being who you is, much <laughs> less who you ain't. <laughs> right. So, so get your head around who you is. You know, like I, I learned slower. And so, mm -hmm. yeah, I, I, I'm i going to always be in here in my studio. I'll be wherever in the bus. I'm going to yeah. be working on stuff. And, and, and I had to get over that, like the ego expectation yeah. part of, of, you know, uh, you know, my peers, my, all these great saxophone, you know, yeah. Pia Fuller, I could go on and on all these great saxophonists. Yeah. I have to figure, okay, how do you get it? I right. literally fall, I fell asleep on the SAT. Okay, I took a nap. You, okay. <laughs> really? I mean, just, just to let you know, <laughs> the way my brain worked, it, I was like, I'm not gonna do well at this and I'm sleepy. <laughs> <laughs> we have our choices, people. I can't do everything. It's this time is to sleep. Quiet, <laughs> this is a quiet environment, a great place for a nap. <laughs> Wow, I get that. Did you finish the SAT? That's what I like to know. When you say finish, what, what exactly <laughs> was you? Um, at the end of the two hours, did you still have a lot left to put in? I just put checks and stuff. So you just were like, I, yeah, whatever. I, I finished. That was a pretty. Well, you worked out really. fine. You know, you didn't maybe finish the SAT, but you have finished beautifully in your career. So oh. we'll take that. Well, they, they say, you know, I had an old, old uh, a saint who, who becomes a mentor of mine. He started out being a racist old white guy, and he tells the story himself. He said, by the time God got a hold of him, mm -hmm. he, he determined, he said, I'm going to finish strong. Mm -hmm. Right there in Tennessee, right there in Nashville, man. Mm -hmm. and, and this old guy, Al James, you know, he said, I'm going to finish strong. That's good. And man, he, he belonged to Strong Tower, the church I went to, you know, mm -hmm. most church. He changed the whole thing, pissed off a whole lot of his white friends. Mm -hmm. it's like I'm gonna finish strong. I love that you say that though, because I I, I feel I am the same way. Um, there are guys that can just do it. They can just you can call them for, and they're just gonna be you know extemporaneous. They can speak. They can rip. They can sit in with anybody. I've never been that guy. I've always had to shed and shed and shed. And you can start feeling self conscious, like you know, I'm just not as gifted as the other. But if you get there, it doesn't matter how you get there. Get there. Doesn't matter, man. Yeah. Yeah, but you know the thing. The thing is, in this business, you can't compare yourself to so. That's the that would be your death nail because yeah. it's, it's it's called art for a reason. Yeah. Art means you say it how you say it, you do how you do it, and then yeah. the next one does it differently. And if you try to be that other person, you're not going to be yourself. Right. So yeah. yeah. That's every word. We need a Cap Kirk Willem and we need Alvin Chia. We don't need duplicates, you know. Right. That that sound that sounds so good, and I, and I just aspire <laughs> to that. You know, it's just the problem is that that human element of like comparison. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, I, I hear I hear it. Last, like you said, game recognizes games. Mm -hmm. Like you hear it and you go, mm -hmm. I can't do that. Mm -hmm. And you have to process that one way yeah. or another. Yeah. And so, yeah. you know, the good choice 
is to is to work on it your whole life just mm-hmm. keep working on where the bar mm-hmm. is set mm-hmm. but also at a certain point to to really embrace who you are what you bring mm-hmm. you know as you say to the game or whatever metaphor mm-hmm. I, I never forget Michael Brecker, who mo- most of us as sex owners sure. realize him. Yeah, sure. And he came up to me as I was about to like, you know, gush, you know, about mm-hmm. man, I finally get to meet you. He right. said, man, Kirk, because we were on this gig in like Spain. I was playing with Bob James. He mm-hmm. said, man, I love your sound. Oh, that's and great. It just, I, I froze. Yeah. I, I was like trying to get it together. What I was going right. to say to this guy. Right. Like, <laughs> So I decided, I said, okay, show me something. Yeah. In other words, I, every time I saw him, I would ask him, Michael, show me something. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Yeah. And I would work on that thing. Yeah. And I would build it into what it is I do. Yeah. So consequently, I will say this, that I'm not the average smooth jazz saxophone. Mm-hmm. Oh, <laughs> no, no. Oh, no. Because, you know, I'm constantly trying to reach for something mm-hmm. else. I, I do it. I Sometimes I get it. Sometimes I don't. But I'm mm-hmm. always going to be reaching. Mm-hmm. Now, let right. me, I, I, this is so great. I never, first of all, I never get to ask musician, real musician questions. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Riddle me this, Batman. <laughs> do you look at your career or your path like a straight mountain? In other words, you can say that in 2000. 22 you were definitely better than the cat in 2016 or does it go like this that there are times that you were at the peak of performances and you're trying to generally work to get better wow what an excellent question so yeah i can't remember i'm going to tell you in a minute who said it but uh the law of undulation who mm. who, who wrote uh mere christianity uh c.s lewis okay c.s. Lewis talks about the law of undulation mm-hmm. so, what you talked about you know up and down up and down right and but when you zoom out it looks like that that's good that's good stuff kirk that's good zoom in and use man i'm cratering right you know Mm. and you know you that's the spiritual tie-in as well yeah that is a spiritual tie-in as well well on those questions that question would be when you go down do you feel like um, you're having struggling to come back up, or you know, okay, I'm gonna come back up. You know, let me no, it, it's miserable. <laughs> you feel, <laughs> you know, you feel terrible. And I think maybe mm-hmm. that is a key to, you know, like so we are finally in an era in general of of you know mental health and really taking care of mm-hmm. ourselves. And so it's it's important to acknowledge, man. Yeah. yeah. As they would say, it sucks. Like yeah. you, you feel bad. You know, you're like, man, I don't even know why i try you know mm-hmm. and oh. the, you know and then you you turn the corner and right. i'm standing there on the stage at carnegie hall right I'm right there going, <laughs> made a couple I, of turns somewhere <laughs> uh, something happened <laughs> and, and, and i will put this in Alvin. that's that you know what you would what you know is yeah. that the path that we took that take six took that i took um where we were trying our best to do this thing where that has to do with accomplishment that has to right. do with you know uh you know just aesthetically and and even career wise like i want to mm-hmm. do this and accomplish that that we, we we back up and we say wait a minute oh so every time i chose god mm-hmm. I honored that okay and so he honors that in ways that are that confound the wise yeah you could almost I, overlay choosing God in your career and life with that mm. mountain. That's the ultimate you know zoom what? out. <laughs> what? Yeah, that's the ultimate you know, zoom out. In that vein, I would say that God even allows for those valleys because I yeah. think every time you go in that valley, you come up, like you just said, Kirk, higher. So yeah. if, you, if you make a choice, I mean, some people stay down and never get back right. up. They say, sucks, like you said, and I'm stay sucky. But some, you, if you know, first of all, this is your gift. And if you trust that God gave you this gift, then it's like, yeah. okay, God, I'm down in this pit, but you put me here. Absolutely. So I'm wait for you to take me out, but while I'm waiting, I'm going to practice or whatever else, you know, and I'm going to keep yeah. moving but keep for more, you know. Or else you wouldn't need a God. You wouldn't need a God, you know. If I could do this all myself, that's, that's what the true. enemy will tell you. Just keep going. Yeah. And, and this, when you zoom out from that perspective, you were actually doing this. How yes. about that? It's just the opposite. Yeah. Lose I mean, your family, I, 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 your mind, or whatever. I want to ask you guys both a question because I'm the reporter, host person, but you guys are, you know, 
he's my co-host, but he's also an entertainer. You're of course an entertainer. Of course you've hosted things as well, Kurt. But, you know, speaking of that mental health, you know, I feel like because you're on the road a lot, you don't use a lot of sleep, um, you're away from your family whom you love, uh, all of that, you know, how does that play into your psyche? Because I feel like when I, the more I'm closer to the fire, I'll call it being around entertainers, I feel like you guys sacrifice for us. Mm. Like you really have sacrificed your lives and your life. You can be at home. You can have just nine to five, go and do whatever and be at home with your family. Yeah. You don't, you keep your gift alive for us, mm -hmm. but you lose out. So, I mean, how do you both feel about that? I don't know if Kirk, you want to go first about, you know, how that works. Yeah, sure. Well, I mean, I, I will say, we're, you know, Ruby and I have a special story and, and I'm always careful to say it because, you know, I don't want to bring any uh, condemnation on anybody who whose path is not like ours. Like, right. like I could say I'm 64 and I met her. Mm -hmm. when, so next year it'll be 50 years since I met her. Right? Congratulations. Pre-graduation. Yeah. Thank you so much. But you get the Wakanda shoulders for that. I don't even <laughs> clap for that. That's just. <laughs> and, you know, I definitely I'll take that. But I, I will say that, you know, it, it really is that absence makes the heart grow fine is powerful yeah. you know right. it's one of the secrets that if you're willing to work with god he can turn that into a positive and but it, it does have a lot to do with your frame of mind like when you're on the road and just mm. being prayed up and 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 so this is where i get to gush a little bit about alvin and okay. that's to say that you know, recently, for instance, we were all together on a tour called Georgia on my mind, you know, mm -hmm. the, okay. you know the, the Ray Charles story and and Nina Freeline was was a, one of our amazing special guests. And mm -hmm. Just before that tour, she lost Phil, her, her mm -hmm. sweetheart, man, and oh. they came together of, uh, I think, 45. Or yeah. So. Oh. yeah. And he is, of course, the designer, the chief designer of the, Af the African-American Art and Culture mm -hmm. Museum in Washington, D.C. Mm -hmm. That's arguably one of the most pro prolific, beautiful, profoundly beautiful yeah. structures in the world. But, but having lost her husband, of course, she was very, very fragile. Yeah. Yeah. And so here we are. And look at God. Here yeah. we are in this setting where she and I, at the very least, not to mention these band members. Mm -hmm. And crew members that we get to be <clears throat> in this space for weeks yeah. on end. Right. It takes six. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's like, one thing to say, okay, well, that's really nice. They sound good. No. Mm -hmm. Two things that they did in that setting that God meant to happen. And it was, mm -hmm. I think, especially for Nina, I just got the drippings of it. But that's mm -hmm. that. Number one, they would sing a song for us before we went on. Mm -hmm. That song was life giving. Oh, every wow. night. Every night. Again, mm. context is everything. This lady mm. is in the depths of grief. Yeah. Number yeah. two, they would pray with us. One of them would would preach a you know preach a word. I call it. Mm -hmm. You know, every now and they call on me to say something. I'm like, mm -hmm. well, I'll, absolutely. I'll, I'll babble, but but <laughs> in that setting, Nina was lifted up. And yeah, now, you can speak yeah. to the podcast. She has an amazing podcast called mm -hmm. Great Grief. Mm. You look. Oh, wow. Paying attention, you're listening to what we're saying now. It's Nina is N N E N N A. Nina mm -hmm. Freeman, and the podcast is called Great Grief. Like mm. this. But, yeah. but she channeled again. I believe that because of this season of, uh, were of the initial season of grief, take six stepped in and helped to button mm. her. Then she took that grief and she channeled it into a creative area Love that it. helped a bunch of people. So. Martin King wow. said, you know, if I can help somebody, then my lift wow. is in vain. Absolutely. Wow. Absolutely. That, so one ministry helps build another ministry that helps more people. Yeah, absolutely. And all from her grief, right? You're saying it all happened in this midst mm -hmm. of her grief. Mm -hmm. wow. But it took God, it took God put take six in that place. Mm -hmm. Well, well, man, you guys, what is, you know, you, you hang together, you stick it out. Yeah. All these years. Can somebody tell me, besides just you're making a good living, what does that redound to the world? And I'm here to tell you, this is just one instance of it, of yeah. why it takes six has their, you know, longevity and their mm. to the to the mission has mattered. Mm. I, I, I love that. It's like, um, you know, the idea of a prism, you get the light in and the colors come out. So mm. you get you get Ruby's light in and you get Kirk's beauty. That, and God's beauty that comes out of his instrument at the end of that horn. Yeah. You get 
Adria's love and light and you get Alvin being able to bless people. You get Phil that was shining through Nina and you got all yeah. her love and all her art. And I think that that's what I don't think audiences really realize. Mm -hmm. That when you receive the art, the gift of performance and love and talent, what you're actually receiving is the, that his support system, her support system's light. And it'll yeah. shine through it on all of us. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's beautiful. I mean, it sounds like an inner community, if that makes sense. Yeah. Sense. Yeah. And like that's why we community. get each other. That's why we get yeah. each other. Artists, um, artists also can recognize when another artist is in trouble. Yeah. Mm. Because there's a lack of, you know, it's just notes. Yes, but there's sir. no substance. There's no anointing on okay. the life, and right, right, and you feel right. that emptiness, um, or this, or you feel that that person is searching, looking, trying to discover. Um, mm -hmm. Yes, sir. So I mean, does that translate in your gifting and your music? Does sometimes those low moments translate into better music? I think out of pain, yeah, great art can come. I just don't mm -hmm. think it's good to stay in that. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Yeah. yeah. Right. And yeah. history, history, uh, the, the, the history of the arts, you know, is full of those stories, you know, mm -hmm. I mean, Robin Williams. Sure. Sure. Yeah. Sure. I mean, yeah. What, 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 yeah. What a great example. I mean, Robin lifted us all up, man. Yeah. In so many mm -hmm. different ways, but he was down in that. And he yeah. Out. Yeah. So he exited yeah. in the most painful way possible. Not right. a lot of, you know, examples of Whitney. I worked with her for seven yeah, years. Yeah, yeah. I know, right? Yeah. You, never, you just never know what people are going. And, and I don't, I think that's because I, as I do marketing or whatever, I watch the reactions. Like say, maybe somebody about Alvin or whomever. And I think this, people just forget you're human. Mm -hmm. Like, because just because you go out and perform and you show your gift and you look, like um, Kirk just alluded to, happy on stage, you don't know what's going on in their head. You don't know if they just had an argument with someone or got to go home to no one or whatever, because there's so much more to being an entertainer. Sometimes, honestly, this is my little theory, that you guys are the best performers of the things that you're going through. Like you're the yeah. ones who can cover it the most because yeah. you have to. You can't yeah. go and you know, with the your tears in your eyes. And go yeah, through yeah. You know, it's, you it's very true. Well, I actually do go on stage with tears in my eyes pretty much every night. <laughs> so I'm the town crier. Yeah. <laughs> but, but my tears are normally when I start talking about the Lord, you know, I can't. Yes, just, yes. Those are good tears. I, we take those all day. <laughs> so, uh, but, so just as a quick break for our audiences who just descended from planet, from, from the moon and don't have any idea who this amazing <laughs> cat is. Kirk has been on everything. Made just assumptions. Yeah. yeah, you need to Wikipedia Google this guy. He's been on everybody's project. I think he's even in the Guinness Book of World Records. Is, is that right? The, Are that you really? Right. Yeah, it's the it's the saxophone, really? the saxophone solo that has been heard by more people than any other saxophone solo in recorded history. Really? G O A to the T T T stuff. <laughs> which one? Which which one? Which song? Uh, Whitney Houston. I will always love you. Wow, really? Congrats. That's and, amazing. And again, remember, Kenan, like what I, we started talking about earlier, you know, when I yeah. think of Char Charlie Parker and and Cannibal Adderley and, and you know, Theo Fuller and, and et cetera, uh, you know, I would pick one of their solos all day long. <laughs> but the, the well, guy who... as I just told uh, uh, Alvin that I said he's probably not going to take this title, but I said he's iconic. Now you just proved it. So... <laughs> yeah, well, you see, Kirk doesn't even yeah. have us in front of his mantle because that Guinness thing wouldn't even fit on. Be like, oh! <laughs> the whole room. Speaking of mantles, my my Grammy's at my mom's house. Like I, you know, I did not get to spend much time with it. You know, I mm. got oh, really? just long enough for me to get that box to send it. I to love it. City. I love it, man. So deserved. Mama, it's hers. She earned it. Yeah, and, and let me say this, man. Uh, she flaunts it. Like, you know, when friends come over, oh, she, she walks them right by that, man. <laughs> oh, that? Oh, oh, that? oh glad oh, you oh. asked. That old shoe. Um... <laughs> walks to the door with it. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Oh, that's great, man. Your socials, before we forget, Kirk, what are your socials? How are, what are you doing? What are you up to? Yes, if you spell my name, you got all my socials. K I R K, okay. which means church. W H A L U M. M is in man. So whale, like a whale, no E, but U M. Kirk Whalem. It's at Kirk Whalem on all of them. 
And yeah, the main thing is the Christmas record right now. We're so excited about that. You know, how does Christmas sound? With uh, featuring, uh, who, oh yeah, Take Six. Oh yeah. Lovely. Those, those guys, I remember. You that. know, I, honestly, we do so much stuff together. I forgot we did a project, a Christmas thing together. Yes, sir. And uh, and actually this song called Seven was not supposed to, you know, be a Christmas song, but I thought, okay. man, that song is going on my Christmas record. Yeah. I just figured, what a beautiful thing because the way the lyric is is like you know uh what the god seven days the the world god made the right world, but right with, like you complete me so basically it's like a present somebody opens a present and it's this song that somebody wrote for you so that's that's what it was so can i ask what would be your favorite either story or music like what do you the, i don't say the most proud of because i'm sure you're proud of many but one that kind of stands out in your head you know even if it was a story behind it that kind of made you want it or enjoy it more is it something like that an experience you mean or, or an experience what? or maybe music that you created to do like you know that one really hit my heart that's the one okay that I love or something yeah. like that right so uh take six goes all over the world but they definitely go to south africa and south mm -hmm. africa is that place uh for me where i have more fans there than any other place except the united wow. states wow wow yeah. Yeah, and I have a platinum record there. And Wendy Moten and I did it all I do. Oh. And also 1994, you know, one of the, I think that was the first time I played South Africa was with Whitney Houston, the end of apartheid, apartheid of course, 1994. Okay. And one South Africa. It was the first time legally that everybody, black, colored, and white, could be in the same place legally. Uh, and it was, mm. it was. Pa powerful. powerful yeah it was oh, powerful yeah. and you know seventy five thousand people live and then more than seven million via wow. yeah hbo well, and, and was that the one where mandela was actually there and they had oh, the yeah. yeah he was there when he was there it was it was mind-boggling yeah uh, mm -hmm. just to be in south africa and, and to at that time in my life i felt like okay i'm done but then I realized that, you know, when I get on stage and we're playing, 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 and at a moment they would say, we might do Amazing Grace. So she goes into Amazing Grace and then she turns around and looks at me and says, Bishop, you play. And she used to call me Bishop. Okay. And but I used to be the kind of the chaplain, you know, I yeah. did all the Bible studies and I, you know, we prayed before we got, I went on stage. But she said, Bishop, you play. And so but I took a breath to play just because yeah. I, I was, as the boss says, play, you play. Right. But now, and then I just, I said, oh my God, it's the first song I learned. Oh, oh man. Oh, wow. I was, a, I was a mess. I'm like, yeah. I'm trying to play. <laughs> oh my God. Uh, oh man, that's so wow. beautiful. Okay, the, the, it just shows how, how, how common spirits. My favorite story about all these years on the road with Take Six was happened three days after the wall came no i'm sorry started three days before the wall came down we were in berlin oh. take six it was right there staying in west berlin in some hotel that morning i got up went jogging right up to the wall saw this guy standing on top of the wall you know with the machine gun or what waved him kept running ran all the way back <laughs> two three days later we flew to open for miles davis miles okay. davis is there we opened we did our thing like 10 o'clock Miles doesn't show up till like midnight. We're off the being off the stage for an hour, but his dressing room wasn't warm enough. So we're just milling about, milling about this big hall, a standing room only, midnight. Ba -da! Miles is on remote. Cloud crowd goes bananas. Just <laughs> he's there. All of a sudden, so we had this thing where they used to walk kind of like in a cluster, everybody's on remotes, and they're doing like uh human nature, something up speed, coming, coming, coming. Miles gets out there, they are smoking, 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 killing it. All of a sudden, about 30 minutes into the performance, probably like one o'clock in the morning, from one end of the hall, there's probably about 15,000 people in there. You heard, and this is in Spain somewhere. And it was whispers that it started at one end that was coming across. And what they were saying was, the wall is coming down. The wall wow. is coming down right then. When Miles is on stage, oh man, Miles is on stage. At the same time? At the same time, the wall wow. is coming down, the people here, and the, I thought the roof was gonna blow off the place. Wow. It was like, <sighs> and of course, Miles is all about freedom and 
and human beauty yeah. and soaring spirits and all of this stuff. And I could it sw- the cinematic mind of me could swear Miles hit this note. The crowd went crazy. And all the other, but it's that same kind of thing. Freedom of spirit. All of this art is connected to wow. something. It's, they're just not notes and rudiments and modes. It is a beauty and a freedom of spirit. And when that thing comes together, man, oh, that's, that, it is and, nothing better. But it shows you how God can put stuff together at that right time. I mean, there's yes. a lot of moving yes. parts that came together that were iconic once again. That right. never Right. Couldn't put, but he couldn't have put it together. Right. I'm, I'm like, I was just at the wall and Miles and I was just on that stage and we were just <laughs> absolutely well, beautiful. Yeah. So, you yeah. know, I believe that Alvin, that God speaks the language of music that, yeah. you know, I'm a polyglot. I love, you know, love language, as you know, I speak French. Yeah. Right, 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 right. right. With Japanese and whatever. But God is not relegated to uh, syntax and right. grammar mm-hmm. and terms and all mm-hmm. that. God speaks a language where, like you say, Miles playing that note. Yeah. What is at the heart of God's message to humanity? What is at the heart of the gospel, if not liberation? Yes. And you have a movie that absolutely. Don't you have a movie called Humanity? Uh, yep. In French, it's called Humanité. But Humanité. But, uh, okay. It's about. Yeah. Where I is mean, that playing? Where's that? Every, you can get it on Amazon, you know, okay. uh, just wherever you find the movies, you know, humanity E with the accent. But just okay. think about that. I mean, that that to me is it. Like even the, he you, came to set us free. The Bible from from Genesis straight through the Revelation weaves a tale of liberation. And so, yeah. you know, yes. the wall coming down. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, you know, South Africa, you know, apartheid. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I would argue, and I, I know I would get a lot of pushback, but that w- the reason that social justice is so important, you know, globally, and if certainly in America, is because it's God's message. It is the mm. thing. People say, well, right. you, know, you got to give back to the gospel, man. Right. I'm like, mm. uh, this is the gospel. The gospel is <laughs> about freedom yeah, what, of spirit. And yeah, so, what Jesus, I, call I don't know you probably. Yeah. I call it the gospel 2.0. You know, yeah. I mean, we are the, we are the next generation of the gospel. What we read is what has already happened. Very we are the next so. generation. Very we much so. Next- preach, Kenna. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. But listen, I've had an iconic moment right here. Listen, okay, out of my illustrious career, having both of you guys in the same place, listening to your wisdom, being in your presence, I am forever grateful. Like I have, I know I'm kind of stayed, but inside of my head is going. Whoa! So I'm super happy and grateful and thankful for you, Kirk. Absolutely. And Absolutely. Well, hey, I, Kirk. I to, before I leave, though, just quickly, I, I do have to. Uh, so I, I'm looking at y'all. <laughs> <laughs> you looking at my dad's African coming through me. And he put all this black like on the me. Last 30 seconds? <laughs> I got to put my makeup on, man. Like, I'm sorry. What were you saying? You look now, gorgeous. You look wonderful. Kirk has a podcast. All of this positivity comes out. He has okay. his things set up. So, I mean, it, it makes sense that uh, Nina would have hers from the stuff she has to give. Kirk has his. What, what, what's your, where can a we podcast hear your podcast? Called, it's called Humans Being with Kirk Whale. Wow. I love okay. it. My other little podcast that I just started when I was in Franklin uh, called uh, The Bible in Your Ear just hit a million people. So just reading through the Bible. So, well, okay. yes. Are you serious? million people wow okay i'm gonna repeat this word again iconic (laughs) and kirk are you uh, one last question are you doing any more of the gospel according to's so uh, gospel according to jazz chapter five is what we're now working on of london you know they've been you know you know biting at the at the hook so we'll see if that happens but really love it love it love it we never want to let you go apparently but if i say it again i'm gonna look really silly so (laughs) <laughs> no, we love you so much, Kirk. Thank you. Love so you, Kirk. Much. Thank um, you. Thank you. Thank you. I love you. Thank, thank you so much for the invitation.